Hello, everybody. Hope you're having an amazing day today. My name is Steve. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. Today, I'm going to be reacting to how UK firefighters put out a house fire. You know, I'm really interested in learning about UK first responders, how they operate, what are some of the differences between first responders in the UK versus the US. I've only really seen a couple of different videos about this topic so far, but this will be the first time that I'm reacting to anything about UK firefighters. So far, when it comes to first responders in the UK, I watched a video about an EMS driver and what it's like to drive an ambulance through rush hour traffic in the UK. That one was pretty intense. Uh, another video I watched recently was learning about some of the different sirens and the different emergency vehicles that you guys have throughout the UK. Those emergency vehicles were from every single country within the UK, so I thought that was really cool and allowed me to see you know, some of the differences and what the different vehicles look like from country to country, whether it was England, Scotland, Wales, or Northern Ireland. Um, but like I said, this will be the first time that I'm looking into UK firefighters, and I'm just really curious, uh, you know, what's it like to be a UK firefighter? What are some of the differences that I may notice between firefighters in the UK versus firefighters in the US, um, but I have no idea what to expect here, guys, but I think this will be very interesting. So let's just go ahead and dive in and check out how UK firefighters put out a house fire. Okay, so when we get a fire call, what you can hear is the sound is going off. And what you can see is the printer. Hold on one second, guys. I want to see what this says. Turnout address so the address of where the fire is building fire domestic persons map reference so where it's located at on a map i guess the details two persons trapped in first floor bedroom three story so this is pretty serious and then i can't tell what all this says but uh address classification i don't know but so is this is this basically a fax that is sent to the fire department from 999? Uh, for example, if someone calls in an emergency to 999, do they then, instead of calling up the fire department, uh, they instead send a fax and it automatically triggers a an alarm at the fire department or something like that? That's what I'm thinking this is. Let me know if that's correct, guys, or is this being created by the fire department themselves. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm thinking this is probably sent in directly from an emergency call to 999, I think. Then obviously they're saying the same thing over the uh, intercom that's on there. Yeah, phone comes. Okay, so, the so what you got there is the crews now know who's going and where they're going. They've got the printer turnout. So hopefully they should be jumping on the pumps. Everybody's ready to go. There's a scan of fire trucks we saw on that um, emergency vehicle uh, video I, I checked out not too long ago. I really like these fire trucks. Yeah, they're pretty cool. That was pretty quick, man. Out the door within a minute of uh, receiving that notice. I mean, they got to be ready at a moment's notice. So now they'll be looking on their terminals. Once they're all in attendance. It's fine, yeah, yeah. Um... Where do they plug, where do they hook the uh, hose up for water? Is it going to be directly? So once they uh, arrive at the incident, at the, the officer in charge will jump off. They start to get some information uh, from whoever's a member of the public is available. What are all the different hoses? You okay, see the this, guys are starting to run out of the hoses. This is a hose. This one down here is the hose I was expecting. This one is something different. Um, 
wait, is this one going to pull water into the truck and this one's going to pull it out of the truck or something uh, to put out the fire? I think that might Wilson be what that is. Start to make his plan as to what he wants to do. Well, sure. How he wants to achieve it. You can see them running out the yellow hose reel. This is usually our first attack. And you can see them running out the red 45 mil hose. The officer in charge has done his 360 of the whole building, trying to get as much information as he can. You can see he's holding a thermal image camera, trying to get any uh, readings. Oh, that would show if anybody's alive in there, right? Or if anybody's in there, period. Animals, people. He's now going to quickly brief the crew as to what he wants them to do and how he wants them to achieve it. Get a plan in order, what we're going to, what we're going to do, so everybody's on the same page. So that, so they're not hooking the hose to a fire hydrant or anything, it seems. They're hooking it directly into the, the okay, truck. So now that he's briefed his crew and what he wants to I do, guess. hopefully he's given them the hazards and risks available as well. He's got his BA team ready. Uh, as you can see, we've got a nine meter ladder coming off the back of the pump. That's a heavy duty ladder right there. Look at that thing. Really I bet that thing's heavy. Crew, uh, are starting to be rigged, ready to go in. Is that the perfect height like that? It looks like it. Oh. Oh, wait, they're going. Oh, never mind. So there's the 9 meter ladder going in. So the BA entry control officer. He'll decide where he wants oh, to yeah. be going and how he wants them to go in. So I'm curious, how much water do they carry on these trucks at a time? How many gallons? Um, I, I can't tell how big of a tank that would be in there, but um, I, I just assumed they were going to put the, uh, hook the hose to a fire hydrant or um, from water from the building itself or something. But um, now I'm really curious what exactly this other hose is for. Is that just a, a, a an easier hose to handle or something? I, I don't quite understand. Uh, what the difference between these two hoses are. If anyone knows, please let me know in the comments. We can see the hoses being filled with water. Yeah. Boom. Maybe they realize this is not as bit not so big of a fire that they're gonna need need a fire hydrant, or maybe there's no fire hydrant around. The hose just to make sure everything works correctly. Okay, so both these hoses are hooked to the truck, it seems, and both are going to be used. So um, is this just, I don't know, maybe it's a longer hose or perhaps it's for, maybe this one's for lighter duty uh, fires or something. And this is for bigger fires, the, the bigger hose. I don't know. The entry control officer is getting his kit together to make sure that the BA crew are safe once they're inside as well. What is the BA crew? What does that stand for? BA crew. I don't know. That's true. I just heard him saying something about got to turn off the gas or something. I hadn't even thought about that. That's true. You. That's one of the first things you'd probably want to do in the case of a so fire like this. Charge is now briefing his crew as to what he wants to do. There's to turn off the gas. One person in the building. They're going to go in and search and start to firefight while they're in there. They are now starting up their masks, ready to go. They'll do a complete safety check. As you can see down by the ladder, they have a ladder rescue kit. Uh, in place so if they should need it if the casualty is unconscious or is unable to get out on their own power oh we can put the uh, ladder rescue kit in place and lower them down safely oh, that's cool so the ba crew are also taking up the harness 
as well to help for the rescue. So I think this is training. I don't think this is an actual house fire. I think this is a training okay, place so for the fire department, in. right? Before they go in, we always I make believe. sure we have a I'm safety. I'm not 100% sure about that. I can't tell. ready to go so that if the fire gets too bad, we can get some more water on it if need be. He'll put a big loop in the hose to uh, carry, it. To carry okay. it over his shoulder. Oh, wait. So, okay, so he's carrying the smaller hose up. Okay, so is the bigger hose, the red hose, is that for to put out fires on the outside of a building and the yellow hose because it's lighter? It's, it's to go up inside buildings like this. That's what I'm thinking this might be now. Um, like I was saying, I, I believe this might be a training session. This might be an actual training building for the fire department. I don't really know. I, I, I'm not 100% sure about that uh, because it is portrayed as an actual house fire. Um, this does, I don't know, is this, does this look like a house? Maybe like a row house or something like that, um, which we don't have a lot of these in the U.S. I don't actually we don't have anything that I've seen that looks exactly like this, but um, I'm guessing it probably is because I don't know what that stuff on the side over there was. And they, um, but it when it came in, it definitely looked like a uh, the way you would do a real fire, which I guess they would portray it like that as they're trying to do training. So I don't know. Guess we'll see. So they can go up. I bet that is what the hose is for. Okay, just checking the building before he goes in. Make sure he's safe. Make sure the floor is safe. Mm, yeah, that's true. I didn't thought about that either. You'd have to make sure the floor hasn't isn't about to fall in. Second team member. So breathing apparatus crews are always teams of at least two. We never work on our own. Makes sense. Second man goes in, make sure the room is safe as he does. And now they'll start to perfect their search and rescue and their firefighting is here and there. Oh, they take the ladder away? See the ladder is now being repitched, which means that it'll be extended and then put back against the building so that we can get the ladder rescue kit in place should they need it. Oh, okay. Okay, so as the guy starts to climb up the ladder, he's gonna hook a bracket over the rounds of the ladder, and it'll lower down a carabiner on a line to the crews should they need it. Okay, now it's coming down. And we can see the breathing apparatus crew starting to connect the casualty that they've found to the ladder rescue kit. The guys at the bottom of the ladder will start to set up a system so that we can safely lower the casualty down. Oh yeah, okay, so this is definitely a training operation, I believe. It looks like a... Okay, so they've got him in position dummy, now. Yeah. Casualties at the window. Thing, right? Isn't it? Fresh air. Yeah. And I'll start to lower him out. It's genius, man. I can imagine something so take like. Take up the slack to make sure that they don't drop the casualty. I can imagine something like that's come in handy quite a bit um, in emergency uh, situations and fires. Uh, you know, on uh, when you got to go and rescue people on second, third floor, or higher. You can see now that the casualty is being laid out the window. For the guys on the ground. So they'll unclip him from the harness and start to take him back. He'll go to what's known as our trauma care area, where he'll be treated for his injuries before being passed on to the ambulance crews. Mm. 
Uh, obviously, we still have a BA crew in the building, so what we do now is reposition the ladder again so that the guys that are inside can come out, which means undoing the top bracket. Well, what this tower here is for? You see the firefighter taking what we call a leg lock, which is to position himself safely on the ladder. Just to unhitch it. Normally at this point we'd expect the BA crew to be firefighting, to doing any kind of further search of the building than we need to. Taking the thermal image camera, which shows up heat spots. So I'm curious, what is creating the smoke in here? Obviously, I now know this is a, at first I was like, is this a house fire or like a real house fire? Or is it, you know, a training session? Because, I mean, the way it came in and everything and the way they were talking about it, it, it looked like it was like a real fire possibly. But um, obviously, it's a training session. How do they create this fire up here? I mean, the smoke up here. Obviously, they haven't set a real fire, right? Um I'm guessing though they do every once in a while. Do they, when they do that, do they actually set a real fire and then they have to go in here and replace, um, you know, walls and stuff every once in a while? I don't know how they do that. How do they train them to actually put out actual fires? Like, how do they train them to actually spray the spray the fires and stuff like that? Okay, so the ladder is being repositioned. So they're gonna lower it to go back into the window opening. We can see that the guys are using the uh, hose reel in order to help with some ventilation. And this is the BA crew coming out safely again. Having hopefully dealt with the fire. So at this point, the BA crew will go back to the entry control board. Incident and they will commander. Give the OIC, the incident commander a debrief, tell him what they found, tell him any issues that they've come across. Okay, so the second crew member comes out the window, bringing his hose reel with him, just being guided to make sure he doesn't trip over it. Okay, so now that the guys have done that, what they're going to do now is they clear the ladder. Entry control officer and the BA crew are discussing with the incident commander uh, what they found, what they've seen inside the building. So the guys are now doing what we call boundary cooling which is to stop any of the heat spread. Um, oh, neighboring properties. cooling down there the building are, itself. Um, external oil features. Uh, it just takes the heat out of the building. So in this scenario, wow, I didn't even... Uh, as you can see, there's smoke coming from the building. Obviously, this is a training drill. Um, and the guys would normally go in, put out the fire. Um, we wouldn't leave, obviously, until the fire's extinguished. Um, right. All the hazards have been cleared. So they actually cool the building down. I never knew that was something that was done. I wonder if they do that in the US too. We have more, more of our houses and stuff are made of like wood compared to more of the stone and brick in the US, so I, I mean in the UK. So I wonder how that affects the difference in what would be done in those situations in, in either country. All right, guys, that was interesting. Um, 
Like I said at first, I wasn't sure if this was an actual house fire, if this was actual just training, but obviously this was training. I'm guessing this uh, the structure here is probably on the uh, the grounds of the fire department, I'm guessing. And so um, that's interesting. I uh, learned definitely quite a bit that I didn't know about putting out fires in general. And then I think there are a few subtle differences. For example, um, I'm guessing in the UK, you're much more likely to have to cool the outside of a building down. Uh, than the U.S. I think in the U.S. because it's wood, they actually they're much more likely to have to put out a fire. Am I correct in there that in the U.S. because there's more houses made of wood and other materials um, compared to mostly stone and brick in the U.K. that you know a house is much more likely to just be completely demolished in the U.S. because if a if a if a big enough fire gets started in a house in the U.S that wood house is just going to burn the entire thing down. When well, here, you you would still probably have, you know, most of the shell of the structure. Um, so they're not really trying to put out a fire on the outside, except maybe the roof. The roof, that's true. Uh, but they are definitely um, trying to cool it down so it doesn't heat up any maybe, what I think he says some oil or gas um, tanks or something like that on the outside. I don't know. Um, that's interesting, though, guys. This is the first time I've ever seen anything quite like this. I found it very interesting. I really enjoy learning about the different uh, emergency response um, departments throughout the UK. Uh, definitely need to check out the police sometime soon in the UK. want to learn some more about uh, fire and rescue. I want to learn about the rescue side as well. Um, cause I, I do believe they're two separate things, right? Fire and rescue. I think they're together, but they're also separate. Um, you have, you know, the people that use the, what do you call them? The jaws of life, I believe is what you call them that, uh, basically pull doors off of cars and accident and, uh, crashes and stuff like that. Um, the fire department does that here. I don't know if the fire department does that in the UK or if that's a separate uh, group of people. Please let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah, guys, I thought this was interesting. Um, definitely want to explore some more stuff like this. So if you have any recommendations about this type of stuff, um, any of the uh, you know emergency response departments, please feel free to uh, leave them in the comments and I'll bookmark them and try to get to them at some point. Um, but anyways, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Please click that like button. Feel free to drop your comments or suggestions about this video or others. And don't forget to subscribe to continue to follow me on my journey to discover my British and Irish ancestry. Until next time, guys. Peace.